The time for this debate has expired. I call on members' order of the day number one. Films, videos and publications classification, interim restriction order classification, amendment bill, second reading. Mr Speaker. Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I move that the films, videos and publications interim restriction orders classification amendment bill be now read a second time. Mr Speaker, I'd like to thank uh, my erstwhile colleagues on the Justice and Electoral uh, Committee for their detailed examination uh, of this bill. Uh, we did not receive uh, a huge amount of submissions, uh, which I was personally disappointed by. Uh, we did not receive a huge amount of submissions, but we did consider them uh, in detail and we have made some useful amendments to this bill. Sir, I'd like to start by just reminding the House about the origins of this uh, member's bill uh, and why I drafted it. In 2015, members may recall uh, an award-winning novel by a New Zealand author called Ted Dore uh, called Into the River uh, was banned in New Zealand. And members opposite asked me if I've read it, and the answer is no, I haven't read it. I've skim read, I've skim read parts of it, but uh, it's actually not intended for someone like myself, Miss Martin. It's intended for young adults, um, so I have not read it. But it was banned in New Zealand temporarily, but still banned. And the reason it was banned is because of a uh, strange anomaly uh, in our censorship laws, uh, and this bill attempts to address that anomaly. So what this bill does is make small, a small but important change to improve uh, freedom of expression in New Zealand. And of course that is a right guaranteed in New Zealand by section 14 of the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. So let me just recount the, the story, as it were, of Into the River uh, and how, how we got to this point. So in New Zealand publications are classified by the Office of Film and Literature classification and, and in September 2013 into the River was classified unrestricted M, suitable for mature audiences 16 years and over by the classification office. Now in New Zealand you can appeal or one can appeal classification decisions to the Film and Literature Board of Review uh, and indeed the decision on Into the River was appealed uh, by Family First, the, uh, the family's lobby group Family First, which saw a restricted classification for the book. And in December 2013, the Board of Review classified the book R14. This is a unique classification that had never previously been assigned. Uh, and the Board President, Don Matheson QC, uh, would have rated the book R18. He issued a dissenting opinion. In 2014, uh, there was growing dissatisfaction with the Board's decision, particularly um, amongst teachers and librarians. And Auckland Libraries uh, requested the Board's decision be reconsidered by the Classification Office. First time uh, this has actually happened. Uh, and it was changed again, the classification was changed again to unrestricted. Uh, and then of course Family First appealed that decision again, so this is the fourth time uh, one uh, book uh, had been considered, uh, the fourth time, uh, so that it was appealed to the Board of Review, and this time uh, Family First asked the Board to impose an interim restriction order, which is where we get to the nub uh, of the issue. And that application was granted on the 3rd of September 2015. Now, the interim restriction order made it illegal to supply the book to anyone or to display the book in or within a view of a public place. And this is the first time an interim restriction order had ever been imposed on a book. And for the second time in two days, Sue Maroney's made a stupid interjection in the House, because what she just said to me then was, surely you've got better things to do with your time. Well, actually, this bill concerns one of the most fundamental rights in the New Zealand Constitution, which is freedom of expression. And actually, what the Into the River saga demonstrates is that that is a fragile right in New Zealand. And for a period of six weeks, we had a book that had been classified as being available for New Zealanders. Because of the interim restriction regime that we currently have, uh, that book was unavailable for six weeks. It was a nonsense. I submit it was a nonsense. And actually, what this bill seeks to do is to remedy that situation so situations like that don't happen again. So Sue Maroney can regard that as, as you know, not worthy of Parliament's time. I, for one, think the opposite, uh, and that's why Parliament's uh, dealing with it. So uh, wh I, I've, what I've done is outline the situation of uh, the Board of Review uh, and, 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 and what happened uh, with, into the, uh, with the, the, into the Into the River decision. Now, what, about, what are interim restrictions? Well, they're, they're short-term restrictions on publications used during the classification reviews or appeals. Now, they're meant to be rare, and in fact they are rare, 
and they're intended to allow quick action if the New Zealand public is considered vulnerable to the publication under review. But the problem, uh, uh, the problem with them, and this was revealed to the, during the Into the River saga, is that the President uh, has only two options currently. They can either allow the decision uh, of the censor that Into the River should be unrestricted uh, to stand while the Board makes its uh, review decision, or uh, the President can uh, ban a publication entirely pending the decision uh, made by the Board. Now, what's not available under the current law uh, is the power to essentially reinstate uh, either of the two original classifications. And in the case of Into the River, this was unrestricted M uh, or R14. And so, I, as I said uh, previously, I think the end result was ridiculous. Uh, we had, had a situation where a book was banned for six weeks, even though pre, three previous censorship decisions across both the office and the Board of Review had ruled that it should be legally available, even if restricted. So what this bill does is propose simple amendments to give the President of the Board of Review more flexibility when imposing interim restrictions. So the key provisions in the bill are, allowed, are intended to allow interim restriction orders to completely restrict access to a publication, uh, as they do currently, or to restrict access to only to people who are of a certain age, belong to a certain class, such as tertiary students, or are accessing the publication for a certain purpose, such as um, a film festival. So essentially what the bill does is create three new types of interim restriction orders, which mirror and reflect the classifications that can be imposed on a publication by the Office of Film and Literature Classification. So in the case of Into the River, it would have meant that the President could, have, could more accurately calibrate uh, the interim restriction. They could have rated it R14, for example, uh, or unrestricted M, both of which uh, the book had previously been classified as. Sir, the Select Committee has made amendments to the bill, which I agree with. They've made some amendments to the structure and drafting of the bill. Uh, the amendments set out the four types of interim restriction uh, orders more clearly. Uh, there's also a change to the bill's name, sir, uh, to the uh, films, videos and publications classification Interim restriction, orders uh, interim restriction Orders Amendment Bill. That's catchy. Uh, that you're exactly, Maggie Barris says that's catchy indeed, very catchy. Uh, there are also changes to the offence provisions. So the Principal Act contains offence provisions that do not envisage uh, the more flexible interim restriction orders proposed in the Bill. So under the amended uh, Act, the existing penalty for breaching an interim restriction order would also apply to breaching any of the new types of orders. So they're essentially changes that are necessary uh, they're, they're consequential on uh, changing the, the way in which interim restriction orders uh, are dealt with. Some members opposite may like to scoff at a bill such as this, uh, but actually I think it's a good bill uh, that makes a small, as I said at the start of my speech, it makes a small but important change to uh, better protect uh, freedom of speech uh, in New Zealand. It cleans up that anomaly, an anomaly that frankly no one really thought existed until we had the case of Into the River, but that's actually what Parliament's responsibility is. Parliament's responsibility is to see how laws interact with what actually goes on in society and see how they're applied. And when the Parliament thinks that the law is being applied poorly, and when Parliament thinks that the law is not having the sort of consequences and the effects uh, that, that society uh, envisages, it's Parliament's responsibility to act. I've acted and introduced the bill. Members might like to scoff at it, but I think it's a good bill, and I commend it to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Claire Curran. Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker.